Five months ago, I arrived in New Zealand. Looking back on my times traveling, exploring, diving, spearfishing, cooking, and feeding new friends, it makes me appreciate all the ocean has given us, and especially what it has given me. The ocean gives me a true sense of adventure, something that is lost in our modern everyday life. You know what's around the next bend in the road because your GPS tells you. But to visit a completely different world, even if for only as long as I can hold my breath, that feeds my soul. And when I return to the surface for a breath of air, I have something that feeds my body. When I am blessed with these opportunities for food, I am then selectively harvesting that species, sustainably leaving the rest without bycatch. That food I bring home, I know exactly where it came from. I know exactly what I'm putting into my body. The variety of seafood I take home, yellowtail kingfish, scallops, lobster, and snapper, there's no way I could afford to eat like this except to go out and get it for myself. And the whole process is extremely rewarding. So this is what I do, and this is why I do it. I love capturing these moments on film, sometimes more than pulling the trigger. I love being able to relive these moments, and if I can, share them with the rest of the world. These are my stories of spearfishing New Zealand. After nearly a month of diving and living with Peter Burt and Fung Ray, I headed out on my own to dive and explore the Fort Northland and the Coromandel Peninsula. I could never have expected all I would see and experience in this first week alone. The people I would meet, the knowledge and help they would give me, would culminate to the most intense three days of spearfishing. Those three days would then end with the hardest fight for my personal best fish. From Fung Rei, I headed up to Pai Hir on an invitation to join a fun comp which saw many Spiro legends there to hone their skills just before the 2016 Inter-Pacific competition. Then I met my partner Brian, an experienced competitor and also from America. Together, we hopped aboard to join Mike and Andy, our host aboard his boat, Oceanborn. Andy motored past the other competitors at light speed to be the first in Cape Breton, the best place in the area to spear all the plastic species on the list. Quickly, our pair split up around the towering pinnacle. An incredible concentration of fish due to the upwelling water currents made this place a hot spot for many pelagic species, and beautiful to behold. Quickly, Brian was spearing fish off the list, first taking a cow eye, and then a nice yellowtail kingfish. A nice school of yellowtail kingfish came in, but I rushed my shot and missed. After that, I rested and enjoyed the ride home. Not happy about getting skunked, it was still fun getting out to a new place and meeting new Spiros. All the fish from that day's competition would then be auctioned and the proceeds would go to the local fire brigade. After Pai here, I drove and explored the northern tip of New Zealand, scouting for the perfect place to spear monster fish. After some trial and error, I heard about Spirits Bay, a Department of Conservation campsite with good ocean access and protection from the swell. But getting there meant navigating a seemingly endless dirt road in ugly weather. Through thick forest, it winded on and on. I was close to turning around, when suddenly, the trees parted and gave way to open pasture, sunny skies, and a towering rock mountain. Even before I could get under the water, I was greeted by sea life. A bat ray in ankle-deep water seemed unafraid of me. It just goes to show, you never know what you will see in and around the ocean. Despite heavy wind and swell around the corner, it was crystal blue inside the bay's shallows. The ocean life in this area was incredible. Large schools of blue Mau Mau made for surreal diving. Even found a few massive stingrays around to play with. But once out further, I saw a few game fish, taking only a cow eye for a hungry couple back at camp. Eventually, I did see some yellowtail, but they were not the size that I was looking for. But I didn't go home empty handed. While searching on the way back in, I found some powa, or abalone. These would be the only legal powa I would find on the whole North Island. That night, I enjoyed a savory dinner. I left Spirits Bay to scout Cape Rianga, the most northern car accessible point in New Zealand. Once there, I could see the problem was just getting down to the ocean. 
so I only took my mask and snorkel to see if the ocean down there would be worth the climb. I hopped the fence and walked past the warning sign, starting the descent that would take me more than two hours to complete. The breakable shale made the climb slow, dangerous, and ultimately not worth the risk. Taking a break and a moment to think, I realized there would be no easy way to bring my gear down or a large fish back up. So instead, I decided to enjoy my afternoon on this rarely visited rugged coast. Just after filming this bird, I noticed something sticking out of the sand. It turned out to be a whole dolphin skull. It just goes to show what you can find when you adventure off the beaten trail. After three trips not spearing any good fish and a worsening easterly storm, I started the long drive south for the Coromandel Peninsula. Driving further and further away from the main towns, I wanted to be as far off the grid for the best spearfishing. After having dinner by the ocean sunset, I drove and explored the nearby Department of Conservation campgrounds, eventually driving to the end of the road and in the dark. There I met Ursula Lambert and Frederick J. Church, a very friendly couple who worked as DOC park rangers. Frederick would be instrumental to my success in the area, providing me with his local knowledge and lending me his Viking Pro Fish 400 fishing kayak. Both would be put to good use. Early the next morning, I was out on Frederick's kayak, under overcast skies with visibility that would never be better than 4 meters. After missing the only yellowtail kingfish I had seen all morning, I took a break. But once I got back into the water, everything changed. The shot was good, also ripping the camera off as the line went past. Fighting the king, I soon felt the bronze weather shark grab hold. Realizing this was a fight I would not win, I took a different approach. I was using the viking kayak as the float. I tugged it over and hopped up. From there, I was able to rip the fish out of the shark's mouth. So we came close to getting it back. While I was laughing about not paying the tax man, he came back in for one last look, and then disappearing under the kayak without me knowing he was ever there. The nice little 12 kilo or 26 pound kingfish would feed my new DSC friends for many days to come. Heck of a way to start these three days. Diving off of Frederick's friend Tim Moss's boat the next day. After finding squid eggs, I knew I was in the right spot. Soon, I was seeing glints of yellowtails through the hazy water. An almost blind shot into that haze. When there was no struggle, I assumed I had missed. <laughs> Instead, it was a lucky stone shot. A fair size 15 kilo, 33 pound kingy 
not bad for 20 minutes in the water. I held it up for Frederick and Tim. Ecstatic, they reeled in their lines and motored over to pick me up. Despite being a fifth my size and half dead, this yellowtail continued to put up a fight. Considering my close call with the shark yesterday, I decided to dispatch my fish on the boat. Only in the water for seconds at the next spot, and a vortex of kingfish came rising up towards me. Immediately, the huge kingy dove straight down, ripping the float line through my hands. I hit the surface and yelled for the boat, which hadn't gotten far. Seeing the silhouette of a shark in the murky water, I hauled the fish up as fast as I could, dispatching him on the boat. And he stripped the cable, stripped the cabling off the top. At 18.5 kilos or 41 pounds, it was my largest fish to date. Him kept me humble by reminding me that the camp record was 35 kilos by hook and line. On the beach with Frederick as the photographer, we snapped some photos of the day's catch. After cleaning them, I made the freshest sashimi possible for a group of new friends. With a full belly and a new personal record, I went to bed fulfilled. Little did I know, my personal record would only stand for one day. Tired and worn out from the previous two days, I paddled out with the sunrise down a creek that led into the ocean. With the intention of only getting footage inside of a yellowtail kingfish vortex, I paddled out to where I had seen them before. After being in the water for a couple hours and only seeing bait fish, I was beginning to lose hope. Then from the deep, a massive chorus of yellows, blues, and greens came rising up towards me, and everything happened so fast. My mind raced as I dove down into the vortex, pushing myself into the camera frame. Then I realized I needed to spear one of these monsters, saw the one I wanted, waited for a clear shot, and took it. That's what happened, but this is what it felt like. By the time I surfaced, the 27 meter, 88 foot float line was stretched straight down and pulling the back of the Viking kayak out of the water. Plus it was dragging me towards a reef that was getting slammed by waves. Not wanting to lose the fish or kayak, I hopped up inside and back paddled away from the reef. 
Then I tried to pull up some line. When the line was ripped through my hands like that, I thought that a big shark had taken hold of my fish, and the long fight began. Time and time again, the line would be ripped out of my hands. The fight was exhausting, but I could feel the pull starting to get weaker as well. Other fishermen nearby came over to see what I was onto and offer encouragement. One other boat even got footage. The monster kingfish was close now and no sign of a shark. My biggest concern at this point was getting tangled in the line, flipped and dragged under, especially with a thinner shooting line. Thankfully, the kayak proved very stable. Finally, I had hold of my slip tip spear, and I was relieved not to see a shark attached to my fish. Holy shit! Oh my god! I grabbed him by the gills and gave it one last hard pull. Last, I had this monster of a fish on the kayak. Breath and exhausted, the fight was not over yet. Gonna lose his head if he's not careful.
powerful gills crushing my hand. And he could still flip and drown me. Yet I had to hold on tight until I could knife him in the brain and kill him quickly. So I sat my center of gravity low in the kayak, wrapped my legs around him, and locked my ankles. I braced myself for the last thrash and plunged the knife into its skull. To improve the quality and taste, I always cut the gills and bleed the fish. Then I started the long paddle back, made much harder with the extra weight, but it felt good. Once back on the beach, we took many photos of the big king. Then weighed and measured it at 35 kilos, 77 pounds, 1.52 meters or 5 feet long, my personal best fish and matching the camp record. This fish and the story behind it, I would later write about for several magazines. I drove out with the evening sunset and reflected on what I had experienced in the last week. Though difficult and sometimes without reward, determination and a positive outlook allowed me to find what I was looking for, and more.